A story about Warhammer. The story of a veteran. A story of working for the emperor in order to go home. A new author arrogantly attempts to tell the story of human and animal nature. Book friend group number. 67467837 keywords of the novel. Warhammer. No pop dot up window in the name of ashes, Warhammer. In the name of ashes. Download the complete set of TXT, Warhammer. In the name of ashes. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. The Last Child of the Village. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 The Last Child of the Village 700.m39. Sur Agricultural World on the Edge of the Solar Domain. At 2 p.m. summer time. In the fields with direct sunlight at noon, a strong man waved branches and drove three skinny serfs out of the shady barn. The strong man has a dull face that is extremely out of shape, paired with a height of 1.9 meters and a body full of twisted muscles. It is difficult to distinguish his true age at the moment. He waved the branches in his hand childishly, pointing towards the distant hillside. Listen to my command. Target the hill ahead. One kilometer turn back run, soldiers, charge. After speaking, he threw down the branch himself and ran out ahead. After running for several tens of meters, the strong man turned his head and found that the three serfs had not moved in place. He then jumped his feet in the distance and shouted at the serfs. Run. Why don't you run? You don't listen to orders. I want the instructor to imprison you. On the throne. My young master Calvin, taking you out would be a huge risk for our three brothers. We can't run anymore, we really can't run anymore. The three serfs complained bitterly to heaven and earth, but when they saw Calvin not responding, they simply lay on the ground and started rolling around. The strong man saw this and had to slowly walk back, muttering as he walked, you guys are not fun. Whatever you say, come out and listen to me. I want to tell the butler, Uncle Levin. The three serfs looked at each other, obviously the butler Levin in the mouth of the strong man was more intimidating than himself. So the oldest of the three was pushed out to please the strong man and said. Young master. It's not that we don't want to run, we really can't run anymore. So, let's change the game and. As he spoke, Surf A's eyes lit up at the other two. Just like you said last time about scouts grabbing their tongues. The three of us hide, you come and catch us. The next surf continued. Right, right. Young master, you're really good at playing this. Surf C received hints from both of them and quickly interjected. Okay, it's agreed that we can't run this time. Let's start with me. The strong man happily turned his back and faced the wall of the barn, starting to time loudly. One, two, three, the three serfs looked at each other and chuckled as if they wanted to run into the storage room on the top floor of the barn. With a flick of the ladder, no one could find them. If it weren't for laziness, who would have brought out this insane young master? However, just as the three of them walked to the barn door, a woman appeared in front of them at an unknown time. Her frail body and tattered clothes could not conceal her fierce expression. Just as the three of them were about to scream, the woman waved her hand and they all fell to the ground across the air. Obviously, this is an unregistered illegal psychic, or to put it another way, this is a witch. The witch's condition was extremely poor. After knocking down the three of them, she shook in place and forced herself to enter the barn. I hope to find a cool place to rest. 20. Time's up. I'm here to catch you. The strong man ran towards the barn with a happy expression on his face. The witch, who had just relaxed, immediately became nervous as she heard his footsteps getting closer and closer. There is already very little spiritual energy left, and on the way to escape below, one must keep strength in case of any unexpected situation. While thinking about the witch's eyes, they quickly patrol the barn. That's it, the witch picked up the hope by the wall and slowly walked to the side of the barn door covered in shadows. 
waiting for the entry of the strong man at 5 p.m. daylight saving time. The sun lingers in the sky, unwilling to set. The dim yellow sun shone on a small town on the edge of a mountain forest, and during dinner time, scattered smoke from the kitchen rose and was blown away by the wind. There is no sound of people or dogs barking in the residential buildings and alleys. An ominous atmosphere enveloped this supposed bustling village. Step by step was accompanied by a series of rapid and powerful footsteps. More than ten female warriors in black armor and high ponytails, armed with long guns and short cannons, covered each other in battle formations and walked out from various parts of the town. They briefly gathered in the open space in front of the church door and quickly walked outward. After passing through two lifeless guards by the rudimentary wooden fortress gate, and resuming the hunting formation, the leader of the pursuit operation, the captain of the second team, Cassin, pushed forward and quickly communicated with the captain of the first team, Aldrin, using sign language. Not a single survivor left. In the name of the emperor, that scumbag will pay the price for her actions. Calm down, Kasim sisters. Her powers are running low. I know. Including this one just now, it's the third time. She hasn't slept for a week. Yes, Aldrin sisters, I can feel that she is like a strange beast, waiting for the coming trial. No, sisters, I mean her spirit has collapsed. What we are about to face may be the last struggle of a wild animal. I know. Half an hour later, several kilometers of wheat fields were quickly cleared, and the encirclement was shrinking smaller and smaller. At the far end of the field, the barn storing grain and agricultural tools is clearly visible. That's it, control this place. Find her. I want to live. Sixteen figures swiftly passed through a golden wheat wave in the shape of a crescent moon, encircling the barn at the end of the field. The witch stood at the entrance of the barn, with no intention of running. The bodies of three serfs were still lying in place, and the remaining strong man was also unconscious by the door. The sludge and ash covered the witch's clothes, and the well-rested witch had intended to escape pursuit through the barn and return to the mountains and forests. However, the large drainage ditch behind the barn clearly played a fatal joke on her. The ten-meter-wide ravine and surging water within it make the nearby forest land unattainable, causing the witch, who was already on the brink of collapse, to completely abandon herself. She simply stood at the door waiting for the pursuers to arrive, obviously, this was the last battlefield she had chosen. Sixteen nuns surrounded with live ammunition, three of whom raised their shotguns from a safe distance in front and aimed at the witch's entire body. The other nuns began to occupy high ground and extend their wings to the edge of the ditch to prevent the witch from diving and escaping, as only living witches were qualified to become the emperor's firewood. When the encirclement was completely completed, the new sworn in next to Sister Captain Cassin, after reading the captain's sign language, said to the witch in Gogurt. Take it easy, witch. Only by sacrificing your filthy soul for the emperor can you repay your sins. You. You forced me. I, never thought about it. The ambiguous gothic language was spoken from the witch's mouth, indicating that the first three screams had caused significant damage to her vocal cords. You. You can't live to catch me. I know the fate of those who are caught. You. We all have to pay a price. The witch opened her mouth, exhausted all the remaining strength in her body, and began her final, singing. Powerful psychic energy spreads around her with physical shock waves, and visible ripples interfere with the aiming of the surrounding nuns. Not enough. This is not enough. More. More. Without spiritual power, then take away my soul too. The corner of the witch's eyes began to crack, and burning blood flowed from the corner of her mouth, proving that she was handing herself over to the subspace on the other side of the mirror in exchange for more power. Unprecedented powerful spiritual fluctuations spread with terrifying screams piercing through the soul, centered around the witch. Black blood flowed out of her facial features, even the blood vessels on her skin burst open. The dripping blood resisted the gravity of the earth and floated around her, 
then evaporated by the continuous spreading waves. The nuns curled up in pain, trembling, even dropping their weapons to the ground. The spiritual pressure continues to rise, and the boundary between subspace and reality is being disrupted. Obviously, the desperate witch is giving them a final blow at the cost of burning herself. Kashin has never felt such pain before, and his swift body movements in the past are now extremely difficult to move even a finger. The antipsychotic grenade was hanging on the buckle around her waist, less than 30 centimeters away from her fingers. As long as you can get it, unplug the insurance, and everything will be over. But obviously the witch knew who was leading this unit, and she had suffered enough in Kashin's hands during the previous pursuit. Her open mouth was facing Kashin, and her black, bloodshot eyes, filled with hatred, were staring tightly at her right hand, with blood streaking in their whites. Kashin's small finger movements were clearly detected, which once again angered the witch. After reaching her limit, the fluctuation of spiritual pressure suddenly strengthened again and became higher and higher. The sky began to lose color, and the low moans of the subspace penetrated the boundaries of reality and echoed in everyone's ears. A nun had already begun to faint. The witch's body began to be covered by black flames, which were taken in advance and given first. If contemporary prices have already been paid, then the gains are unstoppable. She has shown abilities that far exceed the upper limit of the beta level and is beginning to move towards the legendary alpha. When she reaches the pinnacle of herself, it is also when she completely loses herself. The body of the farmer at his feet was the first to be unable to withstand the fluctuations of spiritual energy and be decomposed. It's like a smoldering piece of paper, completely preserving his former appearance, but a gust of wind blows through his entire body like black dust drifting away with the wind. The strong men inside the door also seem to have a hard time escaping misfortune. The nuns even further away had lost consciousness, and no one could stand, except for Kashin. A little closer, a little closer. Kashin muttered in his heart, a distance of one centimeter is like a trench, and the grabbing action is like a freeze-frame animation, with each frame being explained clean and long. Bang! The sound of eggshells shattering suddenly echoed in the ears of every conscious person present. That voice comes from the strong man behind the witch. Unconscious, he seemed to have some kind of shackle finally broken in an extreme environment, and something indescribable was waking up inside his body. Following closely is the rapidly increasing suction from scratch, and the vortex generally neutralizes the oppression brought by the witch. The suction is still rapidly strengthening, and the visitors are devouring every bit of spiritual energy on sight, absorbing the abundant and overflowing spiritual energy in the surrounding area within a few seconds. Even the irreversible flames that should have burned on the soul of the witch were drained. The act of subspace penetrating the walls of reality is unsustainable and can only fade away with hatred. The sky began to regain its original color, and the subspace that had lost its beacon began to be pushed away by reality. The projection of the subspace creatures dissipated in angry screams. On the chaotic battlefield, only the witch stood alone in the center. Exhausted, she stumbled around and gave a slightly resentful glance at the culprit who caused all of this, then her eyes turned white and she fainted. What a good appetite! The idea appeared in Kasim's mind at the moment, and she was found. She looked around a little vigilantly. Sisters were still in a coma. It seemed that she was the only sober person in the last battle, which was good. The young man who had finished all of this slowly woke up after a deep moan. Jiang Wen slowly sat up, his gaze slightly bewildered as he looked at his hands. Fourteen years have passed, and I have been observing this body for too long. Is it finally time to take over? He raised his head to look at the only winner of the battle, Kassin, and his gaze changed from its childish demeanor. The sharp and calm gaze on Kashin's innocent face immediately flashed through various equipment on his body. Combined with the hoe at Jiang Wen's feet, Kazan instantly realized the threat. He was an old soldier. We should treat veterans with respect, but unfortunately, Kassin is exhausted. Without much thought, she chose the most effective way. 
Get up, pounce, throw the grenade in her hand, and hit the center of Jiang Wen's eyebrows. The deliberate lack of insurance in the hand grenade was just enough to knock the awakened Jiang Wen unconscious again, and the threat was once again lifted. Kashin picked up the shotgun at his feet and walked up to him, observing cautiously for a few minutes. Then take out the communication device, press the machine-readable code command that has already been agreed upon, and start calling for the reception of the black ship above the track. At exactly six o'clock Terra time, the sun, which had faithfully fulfilled its duties all day, set down the hillside with the joy of harvest. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Between Peers You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Between Peers, So, You Just Brought Him Back Like This After waking up, Aldrin and Cassin sat side by side in a corner of the rear cabin of the assault boat. Lying at his feet was Calvin, who was still unconscious and had his hands and feet shackled. In this agricultural world with double the standard gravity, one can grow to a height of over 1.9 meters and a weight of over 100 kilograms. In terms of physical talent alone, Calvin can be said to be one in a million. And this is precisely one of the reasons why Kashin, who is not wearing power armor, dislikes him the most. After all, it took her a lot of effort to move this young bear onto the Thunderhawk. The Thunderhawk assault boat does not make much noise when not carrying out assault missions, and there is no other sound in the quiet cabin except for the uniform buzzing of the engine. But contrary to this quiet environment, the communication between the two nun captains was very lively. People have a desire to communicate, and sister silence is no exception. When there is gossip among the nuns of silence, they only communicate through sign language after taking the silence oath. And this communication method has certain natural concealment and exclusivity. Don't believe it. At present, it is. So, you just brought him back like this. Otherwise. His spiritual power has clearly awakened. Letting go of it is a desecration of our duties. My Kasim sisters, look at the ring on his hand. This is a noble. The planetary governor and senate will ask us to make a reasonable explanation. So what? Aldrin sisters. We are the claws of the emperor, and we have no obligation to explain our actions to mortals. However, the emperor has been sleeping soundly for a long time. Without his protection, we cannot arrest a nobleman arbitrarily, let alone bring unnecessary pressure to the lady. The behavior of Sister Silent does not need to be explained to anyone. We are always only responsible to the Emperor. But the damaged armor on your body needs it you also need weapons without bullets in your hands. Gu, Sister Kassin, who was somewhat aggrieved, had no choice but to turn her head away. Especially after making inappropriate noises in the stomach, look, your hungry belly seems to need. Sister Aldrin, who was still feeling a bit lethargic, didn't miss this opportunity and quietly made up for the last blow. Jiang Wen had a very long dream. He dreamed that he graduated from college, joined the military, was promoted, and got married. Then, during a military exercise, he was injured. He, who is disabled, cannot continue to stay in his beloved army and can only choose to switch careers. The procedures for leaving the team come down quickly, and the procedures for changing jobs are probably not too slow. The night before leaving, he sat in the dormitory with the team leader and his senior class leader, carrying only two pounds of Lao Baigan and crying in front of him for the whole night the next day, the chief of staff of the division who rushed to stay after the military headquarters meeting, and also his senior company commander, gave him another option. Logistics personnel for the troops at the high-altitude training ground. Although he doesn't want to trouble the old leader, what can he do when he enters society with that useless leg? The high pension allows him not to worry about his life. But is it true that young people under the age of 30, who are full of vitality, enter retirement early like this? This is equivalent to declaring the death of his life stay on the training ground, although there may not be a chance to return to the front line. But at least, he can still see the place where he once sweated every day. 
the place where he worked countless times to break through his limits, the unit where he once dreamt of blowing horns and battalions. In his dream, Jiang Wen accepted this job and worked there for thirty years. From youth to old age, from young Jiang to old Jiang, from class monitor to old class monitor. After all the new recruits had retired and switched careers, no one knew him again. Old Jiang became old Jiang, unable to even hear a word from the old class monitor. New recruits who often go to the shooting range for rotation training know that there is an old man named Jiang who always smiles and is very friendly. And every new recruit who has just left the platoon for the first time on night duty is also looking forward to the chicken soup that old Jiang has traditionally given to the night post, which is really delicious during the day, old Jiang always smiles as if nothing can defeat him. The new recruits are also willing to complain to this non-reporting old Jiang, complaining about the difficulty of training and saying a few words from their hearts. But who knows how envious old Jiang is of these new recruits behind his back who knows how many times old Jiang's eyes get wet every night when he watches his limp fall asleep in a blink of an eye, it was another fifteen years, and Lao Jiang had already retired. Old Jiang in the restroom is still smiling all day long. Among the stubborn old soldiers, he is the one who is easy to talk to. But he knew in his heart that he had never changed. His heart that is willing to defend his country and country has never been cold. In the blink of an eye, it was another ten years. At the age of seventy-five, Lao Zhang's health has finally deteriorated. On their deathbed, their spouse and children stood outside the window of the ICU. He struggled to open his eyes, anxiously worried that his partner and children would be seen by him outside the window. He has had a harmonious family and filial children throughout his life. In theory, he shouldn't have any regrets either but he just doesn't agree. He has lived a simple life and has never considered achieving success in the secular sense. He really just wants a chance to defend his country. Jiang Wen, whose breathing was becoming increasingly difficult, knew that his time was running out. The doctor asked his family to come in and wait for his last words, but he was already satisfied enough with his family and had nothing to say. But when he saw his comrades coming to deliver him on his final journey, he still exerted all his strength to squeeze out his last breath from his withered lungs. Kill. Even the longest journey has an end. After a forty-minute journey, the nuns finally arrived at the starting point of their mission. A black spaceship docked in orbit and flying synchronously. The wandering band. Kill. Bang. The heavy imperial boots had a friendly encounter with the young man's head. Jiang Wen, who had just woken up, fainted again obviously, Sister Kassin, whose mood was greatly affected by the advice of her predecessors, was a bit too harsh on the source of the trouble. But no matter which universe, women always have some small privileges in this regard. So the naval staff who came to help with the transportation tacitly chose to ignore this small incident. It's definitely not because of a 22.5 mm caliber shotgun or something, absolutely. The glorious and brave Imperial Navy is fearless even in the face of evil gods. How could one possibly succumb to this small threat of force in front of them? As for the precision power sword and the Kalga type flamethrower, it's not a problem. Therefore, it is necessary to emphasize once again here. The brave Imperial Navy will never bow down to violence. The gate of the hangar slowly closed. With the rapid recovery of gravity and air pressure inside the deck, Kassin, who had just stepped down from the Thunderhawk, saw the clerk waiting by the side of the hangar. A newly sworn nun named Natasha Goncharova. The lady ordered me to inform you that please go to the first floor of the church behind the bridge, her office, where she is waiting for you, said the clerk. Obey the decree. So, what about him? Kazan kicked Jiang Wen at the foot after finishing the Sky Eagle salute. Send him to the prison first and wait for the nest to transmit his basic information. According to the process, there will be further purity experiments waiting for him. If there are no issues, after the grading report is released, the lady will decide on his next move, okay, let's go first, Jiang Wen, or Calvin. 
He woke up shortly after being kicked unconscious and had already regained consciousness. The strong body of a bear in this life, coupled with the resilience developed through years of high-dot-intensity training in frontline combat in previous lifetimes, made his quick awakening seem natural. Calvin was squinting his eyes and observing the surroundings. He needed to disguise himself as unconscious to try his best to regain his mobility, while also waiting for the mechanic to untie his shackles. The light and long breathing and gentle heartbeat relaxed the vigilance of the crew carrying him and the naval officers guarding him. The subtle twitching of his limbs, so light that he couldn't see them, represented his attempt to quickly familiarize himself with this body that had been delayed for fourteen years before taking over. Perhaps in the next moment, Calvin, who finds the opportunity to launch a rebellion, will have a chance to grab a weapon. That pistol-like thing pinned on the waist of a naval officer just one step away from Calvin looks very nice. Although this thing in front of me is two circles larger than a handgun from a previous life, it is still full of unfamiliar technology. But compared to Jiang Wen, who was less than one. Eight meters tall in his previous life, his Calvin is no different now. It's just a matter of changing guns, isn't it? The key points of this thing are nothing more than a few, switches, fuses, triggers, and that's all. It really doesn't work. It seems like this weight can be used as a hammer, right? Approximately. The naval officer who remained silent beside him, after watching the two nuns leave, pulled out a tobacco-like object and lit it, then relaxed and leaned against the container behind him. After taking a leisurely puff of his cigarette ring, he said to Calvin, who was still lying horizontally on the ground pretending to be dead. All right, young man, I learned the trick of pretending to be unconscious when I first participated in naval physical training. If I were you, I would get up on my own and let go of those two nearly falling mechanical servants. Gone. I've met a colleague. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 the Mission of Black Ships and the Understanding of Spirituality You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 The Mission of Black Ships and the Understanding of Spirituality, that was really embarrassing to the point of suffocating five seconds. Many years later, in the diary, people found Calvin's evaluation of this experience. Jiang Wen, who has been a bystander for fourteen years, is obviously not very proficient in the Gogoth language. Most of the serfs he interacts with in his daily life are native to the low Goth language with unclear pronunciation, so it took him a full four seconds to understand the other person's meaning. Calvin, who pretended to be a big failure, decided to do something after briefly thinking for one second. He stood up and rolled behind the unresponsive servant. During this process, his flexible and powerful body kept his movement silent, his agile reaction allowed him to find the weapon he wanted and try to obtain it at the moment he got up, the powerful force makes simple joint techniques simple yet intimidating. Within half a second, Calvin snatched a screwdriver from the numerous prosthetic limbs behind the servant and pinned it against his head, only to hear the navy officer's belated persuasion. Relax. Relax. Young man. You don't have to be so nervous at all. Give me a reason to believe you, Calvin said, speaking in unfamiliar Gagothic as he cautiously looked around. This is the Black Boat, she belongs to the Star Language Court. If we have any ill intentions towards you, at least you won't be brought up without any control measures, understand? My child. Black Boat. What do you do? You shouldn't have known all of this, but your spiritual talent has awakened, child. This ship is a special spaceship of the Empire's Star Language Court to collect spiritual beings within the Empire's territory. Its mission is to find you before your spiritual energy loses control. Spiritual Energy This taboo vocabulary seems to possess certain concepts and powers within itself. At the moment Calvin read this word, his instinctive reaction made him understand the meaning it represents. He seemed to see a flower growing recklessly above the laws of cosmic physics, enchanting and reckless. Every subtle pattern on the enchanting petals represents a powerful force, while the ugly roots that inhabit the entire universe clearly tell him what a sinful and tragic story each force ends up with. 
he saw that someone had made a deal with it in exchange for power he had never possessed before, at the cost of his own and other souls, I have also seen some people attempting to find the essence of it, but losing themselves and humanity in the process of searching. Every person with spiritual talent is both a lucky and cursed person in this universe. Fortunately, they break free from their existing destiny and have the possibility to truly fly into the sky, unfortunately, from the moment they awakened, their souls had already been placed on the table of evil gods. Every time this taboo power is used, it brings about the growth of power. And every seemingly cost-free enhancement will repeatedly light up the projection of the user's soul on the other side of the subspace, until those demons hunting for evil spirits find their soul along the light. When a person cannot restrain their own desires and uses the power of this taboo without restraint, his soul will become increasingly clear in the projection of the space, and one day, the evil gods and their minions in the space will find him, taking his soul away, devouring it, or becoming a plaything in the almost eternal life of the evil gods to dispel boredom and endure endless torment. And his remaining flesh and blood will also become the gateway for evil gods and their demonic descendants to enter the real universe. Let them break free from the constraints of cosmic laws and embark on a more terrifying carnival of hunting and killing in reality. Can anyone really resist the temptation of this power? Calvin has no expectations for this. As a nominally 14-year-old veteran who has lived for two lifetimes, he has always held a pessimistic attitude towards human nature. There may be fewer flies and dogs in the military camp than in society, but isn't it just to break through one's own limits, shedding sweat and even blood and tears every day? The temptation that seems to increase without cost is truly irresistible. This cognition even includes Calvin himself. When Calvin fell into a contemplative silence, his spiritual power finally responded to him for the first time in his brief fourteen-year life. He saw from an inner perspective of his soul. A black gemstone with countless facets, slowly rotating and rising from the ocean of his consciousness. That gem seemed like a miniature black hole, greedily absorbing all the spiritual fluctuations around it, so much so that when it responded to Calvin's call, it devoured all the overflowing spiritual fluctuations and abnormal temperature changes from the subspace. Calvin's spiritual fluctuations were completely suppressed within his own body, so much so that the Geiger counters scattered throughout the hangar were unaware. But Calvin didn't understand these things, he just saw from its slow and steady rotation frequency that it didn't seem like losing control at all Calvin regained his senses and continued his previous thought process, asking. So, if the black ship arrives late, what if I have already lost control? That is to eliminate you after you lose control. You should be grateful that you are not the latter. The corruption of the subspace is irreversible, and this is the blood lesson that the Empire has learned with countless lives for thousands of years. So, should I still thank you? Of course you can. And to be honest, you are different from those taxpayers, you are a noble. Military nobility. Unlike those palace nobility who live on Terra, your badge is dyed from the blood of your ancestors, and your parents or elders have contributed to the Empire. You are our people. Of course, you will receive the best training and placement, rather than simply being treated as firewood. Firewood salary. That's not what you should know now, child. You just need to know that you're one of us. You won't be treated unfairly. Put down your ridiculous weapon before you really make things worse. Okay, after looking around, at least twenty suspected heavy weapons were found as security guards, crossing and covering the entire hangar in all directions without blind spots. Calvin, who recognized the facts and acted well, threw the screwdriver onto the steel floor. Under the crisp sound of impact, the servant remained unresponsive and mechanically repeated his attempts to complete the task. They are no longer considered living. Don't pay attention to them, come with me. After speaking, the officer turned around and walked towards the elevator in the corner of the hangar. Calvin hesitated for a moment, but still followed suit. Where are we going? On the eleventh floor B, there is a purity testing ground directly below the church. There are people waiting for you there. Don't worry, 
just go through the motions. If there is really a problem, you will have been praised long ago. Yang. Is this your navy slang? Nonsense. What does your navy mean? What if you're assigned to us in the future? On the basement floor of the church at the top of the spaceship, it is also the office of the Black Boat Lady, one of the few highest-ranking officers in the Silent Sister combat team, known as the Emperor's Claw, who is the true owner of the spaceship. The walls around are made of ceramic steel with a thickness of up to three meters and are engraved with pure marks. In this spaceship, which even requires ten years to build in the world of casting, the individual cost of this cabin can also be listed as an expense. But unlike its expensive nature, when you are fortunate enough to enter this cabin, you will find the spacious space surprisingly simple. In addition to the wall facing the door, which occupies the entire view of the emperor and other oil paintings, as well as the large office desks and chairs directly below, as well as necessary equipment such as weapon racks and holographic maps, there are only tall bookshelves lined with walls all around. When Cassin was allowed to enter the room, the lady was buried behind her desk, reviewing piles of documents. Under the light of human oil candles, the lady's face appeared slightly pale. Obviously, as a true space city, with over 50,000 employees, even daily administrative management is a headache-inducing task. And such a black ship is just a drop in the ocean in the vast imperial territory with billions of administrative planets. After waiting quietly for a long time, the lady finally lifted her head from the document. Her warm and resolute gaze turned to Kashin standing quietly on the side, and she smiled slightly at the corner of her mouth and said in sign language to her. Our little Kassin has grown up and started to be patient. Come and sit in front of me, talk to me about things on the ground. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 The Wall and the Ball, Unresolved You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 The Wall and the Ball, Unresolved The lady initially had her own name, Christina von Gattuso being her full name. She has only been in this space city for too long, and her 300 years of service have taken away all her comrades and ancestors. In the long time, people who had the opportunity to address women as sisters, and their names, one after another, could not travel with women for various reasons. Either he died in battle during a mission and returned to the throne, or he was transferred to another vacant position to take on his own responsibilities. When the lady finally became the Black Boat Lady, and began to take over the power and mission of this spaceship, she was the only one left by her side, and no one could kindly look at her and affectionately call her, My Dear Little Chris. A nun cannot do it, and the mortal crew on the ship is even more impossible. The three-dot-year overall transfer is a mandatory requirement, as the working environment of the black boat is too harsh. The oppressive environment of working in the anti-spiritual ability field set up for safety reasons is destined to be unbearable for ordinary people for a long time. The handling opinion of Xinyu court is that, except for the nuns themselves, other staff members must be regularly replaced and their relevant memories of serving here must be cleared. Because they don't know who they are or who their colleagues are, they only refer to each other by their numbers. So on this ship, no one cares what the lady is called, just call her, lady. Just as ordinary people do not care what they call themselves, the number plate on their left chest is the only reference for them to refer to each other. There is no communication between crew members except for work. In this way, they will not be emotionally bound to each other, and when a critical moment truly arrives, their emotions will not interfere with the decision-making of their comrades. This is both protecting oneself and protecting others. This universe is so cruel and hostile to humanity. As a weak mortal, silence is loyalty, and working in silence is the only way to contribute oneself to the empire. Live in silence, die in silence. On the first floor of the church at the top of the spaceship, in the lady's office. I think I made a mistake, madam. Oh. Let's hear it my little Cassim. You should formally address me by my first name, Cassim Sisters. Okay, my little Cassim. Under the slightly yellowish candlelight, 
there was no one in the cabin except for the lady and Cassin. Ladies do not need to deliberately demonstrate the solemnity and decisiveness of their leaders. The tall back chair decorated with dark green velvet accentuates the slender figure of the lady, who is considered quite upright among the same sex. She leaned on her chin with both hands, tilted her head slightly, and looked at the young man in front of her calmly. Okay, let's skip this step, Kashin sighed helplessly. You keep talking. Speaking of the task, the lady also sat slightly upright to show respect. The task objective was successfully captured, but we unexpectedly discovered a psychic awakener during the retrieval process. Did you bring him back? Yes. Unregistered psychics must be recycled or cleared. This is the law of the empire and our principle. So what about the problem? He may be an aristocrat. In the opinion of Aldrin sisters, we need to file with the planetary governor. This is not a question for you to consider. You did a good job, Sister Kasim sisters. At this point, the lady has regained her power and decision dot making as the highest ranking officer among the silent nuns of the Imperial Claw. Lady Black Boat. She waved her hand forcefully. Politics is something I need to consider, not you. The lady stood up and took two steps with her arms in her arms, then turned her head to Kashin. Aldrin's ideas are not wrong, but please remember that at any time, we will and will only adhere to the principles of imperial law. Your will. Madam, what should we do next? Has the purity test been done? I should be working on it, but I have checked it preliminarily and there are no issues. Okay, now, notify the clerk. Send an accountability letter to the planetary governor, why did an unregistered psychic appear in our mission? I need his explanation. Otherwise, before the next High Lord Council, I will complain to both the trial court and the leader of the Forbidden Army, hoping that the accountability of the Ministry of the Interior is not what he wants. Ah! Kashiman said. Just do it, my dear little Kassin. The lady suddenly withdrew her serious expression and gave Kassin a slightly playful wink. At the same time, our protagonist Calvin is being strongly observed in a cabin ten meters below the lady's office. He was asked to stand naked in the center of the cabin, pressing his hand on a scripture placed in the center of the table. The refined gold cover with a thickness of more than one centimeter and the buckle with chain let Calvin secretly complain that the weight and feel of this thing are enough to be weapons. Then he was shocked to find that the edge of the cover was actually cut. There are still some dried and unknown blood stains on it that haven't been washed clean. On the throne. This thing has really killed people. Before Calvin could digest this terrifying message, the Chinese priest airing a red robe behind the bulletproof glass had already become impatient. Calm down. Now, follow me and recite. The nature of demons is like this, and righteous people do not yet understand it. Once we know it, we must fight against it. Although he didn't understand the reason, for the sake of the serious priest and the flame thrower that had clearly entered the power on state, Calvin decided to forgive the other party's offense with magnanimity. He followed the priest's slow voice and recited. The nature of demons is like this, and righteous people do not yet understand it. Once we know it, we must fight against it. After waiting for Calvin to finish reading this passage, the priest carefully observed the spiritual instrument in front of him, which was engraved in a dazzling red paint like a Niven reading table, with the hands quietly floating and not moving. After waiting quietly for a few more seconds, the relieved priest transcribed the index on parchment and handed it to the waiting nun next to him. Then he stood up and said to Calvin on the other side of the bulletproof glass. All right, you can go now. Calvin, dressed, had just walked out of the door when two armed soldiers watched from both sides and led him towards the next testing session. Waiting for him will be the most important test since he boarded this black ship, which may affect the direction of his entire life destiny. The Spiritual Power Grading The new testing cabin is slightly different from the previous environment. The same gray steel serves as the main tone of the wall, but the weapons on the four sides of the ceiling have been removed, 
and there is no bulletproof glass on the front. In contrast, three high dot level spiritual beings sit in front of Calvin, accompanied by two fully armed guards. After Calvin entered the cabin and sat down according to the instructions, the three psychics gestured to each other with their eyes, and then the tallest one in the middle had a silver arc in his eyes. He looked at Calvin, and a sentence suddenly appeared in Calvin's mind. So, let's start your spiritual power grading test now. I'll just say the following once, please remember. After awakening your spiritual power, everyone will have an initial reference point according to the principle of spiritual transmission. You can also understand it as a concrete microcosm of your spiritual projection in the material world. It may be a sword or a pen. But no matter what, it is the form that your subconscious wants to see when you release your spiritual power. So now please close your eyes, relax, take a deep breath, open your heart, and let us see the projection of your heart subconsciously, Calvin began to follow the instructions of that voice. Close your eyes and immerse your consciousness in the ocean of void spirit. The small, black, and countless facets of the gem that Calvin's soul embodies also naturally responded to his call, slowly rising from the deep sea. At this moment, he seemed to detach himself from all the emotions of the human and quietly looked down at the gem from top to bottom, while also examining his own soul. The tiny black luster lit up and went out in a regular pattern from the even smaller section on the gemstone, as if echoing Calvin's breath. From a more microscopic perspective, Calvin saw that most of the facets on the gemstone were in a damaged state, while only a few were intact. Among them, those that could respond to his call and emit light were even more rare. Well, that's good, keep it going. Let's take a look, a wall. Is it a black crystal wall? What does this mean? Guarding or imprisoning? Well, regardless of it, psychic fluctuations are very stable, and the fluctuation period can be called precise. Calvin, whose thoughts were interrupted by the sound, originally thought about how to deal with other possible problems that might arise next, but when he heard the word, wall, even after living for so long in two lifetimes, he couldn't help but look up in shock. Wall. I'm so big. A ping-pong ball floats here, are you blind? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 The Seed of Legends You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 The Seed of Legends The report on Calvin arrived in the lady's hands three days later. When the document was finally handed over to the lady after going through many twists and turns, she simply looked at it and put it aside. Instead of relying solely on her confirmation of established conclusive documents, she decided to complete the more important task at hand first. The ups and downs brought about by this child's aristocratic status may not be significant in the long life of the lady, but it did bring some trouble, but fortunately the process was still quite interesting. So as an interesting conclusion, the lady certainly has enough reason to leave the final part of this happiness. Calvin's Grading Report for herself after dinner. This may be a good pastime for women to relieve insomnia in the long night, not a regular meal, but rather a dessert. Since it's a dessert, perhaps in the eyes of women, pairing it with bedtime red wine is the best way to consume it. Along with this dessert arrived an envoy from the planetary governor, who brought the governor's handwritten apology letter and a large number of agricultural specialty supplies and some expensive gifts. The lady's response to this was to politely accept the governor's apology, and the supplies were divided into two categories. Living supplies were left on site for the crew to improve their lives, and after returning to Terra, the corresponding list of supplies would be submitted to the Ministry of the Interior, which would be deducted in advance from the tithes in the next cycle, but the property remains intact and will be returned in its original way. The envoy who came to deliver the letters and supplies had no other objections to this, and the lady's cunning and mature handling left him and the big shot behind speechless. Since they cannot find the loophole, the bureaucrats in these places can only pray to His Majesty the God of Plague far away in Terra from the depths of their hearts, in order to send away this plague god as soon as possible. As for Calvin himself, who was the cause of everything, it seems that no one remembers him by now. A person's fate seems so small at this moment, 
especially when they have no ability to speak their own voice, as it has always been. So, on the fifth day after the final arrest operation and its subsequent events, the wandering band finally embarked on its final journey back to Terra. With the collective efforts of the crew after a brief rest, the wandering band began to break free from the gravitational pull of the planet, attempting to break free from its orbit and enter space. Heading towards the golden corner of the galaxy's turning point. Three days later, at the inflection point on the edge of the galaxy, the wandering band, which had briefly accelerated and reached the minimum standard for subspace navigation, finally disappeared from the observation range of the outer space station of the galaxy after a flash. Presumably, there must be someone celebrating their departure in the governor's mansion on the top floor of the nest at this moment. But who cares? Dong Dong Dong. Student 9527, open the door. Your breakfast is here. Dong Dong Dong. Student 9527, open the door, your meal is here. Dong Dong Dong. 9527, open the door. Dinner. The above is all the information Calvin had to communicate with the outside world during the three days after being assigned a cabin. He was required to be prohibited from going out in the cabin without permission, and his only communication was to make eye contact with the crew through the door during meal preparation. 9527 is both the room number and the Calvin number on the ship. This cabin is not spacious, including the bed, table, and restroom. The single-person cabin of about 8 square meters is all his activity space. Clean but minimalist decoration, no books, no players, no entertainment facilities. Calvin did not complain that his military career in his past life allowed him to adapt to quasi-military management very quickly, and even enjoyed it. But people outside obviously don't have too much confidence in him. Given his underage or fear of him complaining, before he entered the confinement compartment, the elusive naval officer even took a special look at the compartment that was truly used to transport those lower-level spiritual beings, which the officer referred to as firewood. A cabin of over 100 square meters in darkness, without windows, bunks, or even toilets. Two small ventilation valves and a simple water supply valve are all the livelihood equipment for the crowded dozens of residents here. The air filled with the smell of excrement left an unforgettable impression on Calvin standing behind the cabin door. Compared to there, Calvin felt like he was in heaven at this moment. In the short eight days, he finally had the opportunity to be alone and undisturbed. He needs to think about his own situation, which is an urgent problem he needs to solve. Who am I? Jiang Wan or Calvin? How did I get here? Where am I going now? What should I do? During the five days before the spacecraft entered the subspace, Calvin carefully considered and ultimately came to a conclusion. I am Jian Wen, also Calvin. Since its birth, this body has had no self-awareness, and even before its soul was born, Calvin, who unexpectedly came to this universe, had already taken over the nest. So, there is no process of phagocytosis and assimilation from beginning to end. Therefore, his legal reasoning about this body is enough to convince him of his own ethical beliefs. As for his parents, it's regrettable that he never had the opportunity to see them. Calvin only knew from the servants around him that they were all serving in a certain knightly order. They are the backbone of the empire's heavy military force, and also one of the countless military aristocrats represented by the Sun Lord who spread throughout the entire empire's territory. When Calvin was only three days old, his parents were summoned to the front lines of the Empire's war. The distant and hazy world of Cartier is a planetary-level fortress for the Empire to defend against chaotic attacks. Every year, countless Imperial soldiers are summoned from various worlds in the galaxy to resist the powerful and suffocating attack launched by the Eye of Fear across from Cartier. When the commander of the Black Legion launched the infamous Tenth Dark Expedition towards the Empire, no one in the entire Empire could stand idly by. Because once Cartier, as an interstellar transportation hub, falls, the Empire will face an insurmountable void in thousands of astronomical units from now on. Although Cartier is small, the Empire has no way out, 
said a non-famous Star Realm military political commissar after reading the defense situation map of the Misty Star Realm. At this moment, Calvin, who had been thinking quietly for three days, also came to his preliminary conclusion. The talent for spirituality may not be surprising. Calvin, who had just finished his self-weight-bearing exercise without instruments in the cabin, lay on a single bed, panting and thinking. Due to the constant loss of power from his soul during long-distance travel, many of his memories also fell into silence. Correspondingly, there are many shattered and no longer shiny facets on the black gemstone representing his soul embodiment. These damages that can only be seen in his eyes seem to have a chance to be repaired only by waiting for the addition of new strength. But in limited memory, he still has some vague impressions about his wonderful journey of conversation with a son with two cores when he first came to this universe. It seems that it was only after that conversation that Calvin had some kind of permission to smoothly utilize the unique energy of his homeland. Spiritual Energy But unfortunately, this memory is also fragmented with only a few scenes. The known way to fully recover is to have another psychic perform a free sacrifice for Calvin, similar to the witch in the capture operation. And his soul also achieved the lowest standard of reigniting consciousness through that unexpected recharge, thus breaking free from the 14-year life of a low-energy child. Okay, we don't need to delve into whether witches are voluntary and unpaid, but asking a psychic to contribute all their soul comes at a high cost. This is not something Calvin can consider with conditions at the moment. Calvin, who had no results in thinking, decisively gave up on this question and began the next step. Why is his soul embodied as a sphere, while being considered a wall in testing? Such a large cognitive difference instinctively made Calvin choose to shut up. Silence is sometimes a virtue, especially when you have unequal information and are unable to protect yourself. And the lack of spiritual knowledge reserves to the point where even basic concepts are lacking makes it impossible for Calvin to analyze his specific state. He temporarily gave up on this aspect of thinking, and the code of conduct for former soldiers once again came into play. Try as much as possible in the future. If there is still no result, then don't hesitate. When the ship reaches the bridgehead, it will naturally straighten out. Giving everything to time may be a good choice eight days passed by in a flash. Before entering the subspace navigation state, the black ship needs to undergo a quiet procedure throughout the entire ship range. From a safety perspective, black ships need to ensure absolute silence for all sensitive cargo during subspace travel. So as to ensure that these big treasures that were already favored by the subspace do not have the opportunity to create more danger when they are so close to the origin of the subspace. And experienced crew members know that high-dot-dose sedatives for this situation are the most harmless and cost-dot-effective choice. This is also one of the most frequently replenished supplies on the black ship, which mainly uses subspace travel as the main method of crossing galaxies. On the eighth day of the spacecraft's launch, three hours before 0.00. .00. The sedative is efficiently and orderly released to various target groups on board based on the risk level and stability evaluation criteria. The specific release methods include but are not limited to. The anesthetic gas discharged from the exhaust valve in the lower cabin of the spacecraft, the one dot on point one injection anesthesia performed by a dedicated person in the heavily monitored cabin, and the blue small pill received by our protagonist Calvin along with lunch. In short, before the designated time arrived, all the goods on the black ship smoothly entered a deep sleep. The crew members who are not on duty are also required to stop all recreational activities and return to their respective cabins to enter hibernation. Only when they need to work will personnel be responsible for waking them up. The entire spacecraft immediately fell silent. The entire black ship arrived here, with less than one dot third of the personnel working silently while maintaining a clear state of mind. When the entire preparatory work came to an end, the relaxed lady finally remembered the document that had been neglected for a long time. As a reward, after taking out a glass of red wine from the freezer, 
the lady opened the first page with great interest under the dim yellow candlelight born in a world with twice the standard Tesla gravity environment. 190 centimeters height, 110 kilograms weight. 14 years old. After only looking at the data from the first three items, the lady frowned and said, Uglin bloodline. Looking further down, it was indeed. Pure blood humans. The special red lettering indicates that the lady is not the only one who has doubts about this. After taking a small sip of red wine, the lady patiently continued to read. Spirit fluctuation difference. Beta periodic stability of spiritual fluctuations. Beta willpower. Alpha plus self-perception. Beta potential. Beta birthplace reference difference. Gamma comprehensive rating. Beta, well, the potential is low. According to the information from the ground arrest operation, it is possible to digest a person in a short period of time beta the explosive pouring of a level psychic requires at least beta plus plus the level of. But this was not a mistake on the part of the testers involved. As the Silent Sisters brigade directly under the lady, their actions have always been solely responsible to the lady herself. Others have no right to interfere, even the captain is no exception. So it is understandable that there may be errors in the evaluation results based on differences in information. At the bottom of the parchment page, on the recommended job training column, three out of four blank lines have already been filled. Based on different positions represented by each other, the content in the column of cultivating opinion tendencies is not consistent after the signatures of the three spiritual mentors. The first point, Adolf Munger from the Direct Department of the Star Language Court. Wizards, stability above the horizontal line is worth cultivating. The second point, Andrei Petrovich, from the Imperial Navy Department stationed by the Star Language Court, said, the Legion political commissar's strong military style and good obedience make people believe that he can perform this duty well. Thirdly, Richardson from the Star Language Court stationed at the Ministry of the Interior said, the spiritual choir's strong physique will give this student a longer chance to be loyal to the Emperor. After reading three viewpoints representing their respective interests, the lady fell into a prolonged contemplation. She doesn't want to support any of their interests, even if it's a short-term benefit for Calvin. In aimless contemplation, the lady instinctively re-examined Calvin's various indicators, a choice that had not been included in her mind for a long time, evoking memories of some top-secret level battles she had participated in while serving in the ground forces. Hmm, maybe it's feasible. She took a deep breath, signed her name in the fourth line of the Cultivation of Opinion Tendency column, and then replaced it with a red tip representing top secret. She solemnly wrote a short and legendary word, G.K., Grey Knight. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Gone. It's a big loss. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Gone. It's a big loss. If a stat warriors, represented by pathogens, stand at the extreme of the physical side in the spectrum of imperial force, then the supernatural side is naturally represented by spiritual beings represented by the imperial prime minister McAdoo. So the tactical positioning of the Grey Knight is to take advantage of the strengths of both families. A qualified Grey Knight often possesses a strong fitness body and steel discipline that surpasses the average stat, as well as a more steadfast and pure will than a psychic. So when the sub-space creatures led by chaotic demons challenge the physical universe, in the worst combat environment, in the most critical battles, and even in the most desperate situations, delivering a Grey Knight team is the only law to turn the tide and achieve victory. The Lady had little and unpleasant contact with the Grey Knights during her service in the ground forces. Putting aside shallow personal emotions, the Grey Knights are indeed a respected unit purely for the sake of imperial interests. The pickiness and difficulties added by the Grey Knights are not a secret among officers at the black ship lady level. So when Calvin's physical condition, similar to that of the indigenous people of the barbaric world, and the mature will and spiritual talent that only emerged in the church world and even the knowledge world, almost unprecedented, came together, the lady first thought of them. 
clear distinction between public and private is the consistent style of the lady. Setting aside personal grievances and solely based on responsibility, the situation of the Grey Knight deserves the best seeds. So without hesitation, the lady finished writing the last stroke on parchment paper and carefully placed the document in the one marked with a bright red confidentiality seal alpha level file bag. Shake the bell at the corner of the table. I ordered the documents on the table from the secretary who was summoned. Priority Alpha Enceladus. The contact code and confidentiality authorization code have been received from my office, and I have personally written them. Halfway through the long journey of subspace, Calvin, who was still asleep on the other side of the black ship, encountered some unexpected troubles. After absorbing all the psychic power of the witch and a considerable amount of soul fragments, the black gemstone, which had been silent for twenty-three days, finally digested and began to feed back his physical body. Stable and powerful spiritual waves emanated faintly from the black gemstone, located precisely in the center of Calvin's brain nucleus. Obviously, the black gemstone, which had been deliberately dormant for fourteen years waiting for its physical condition to mature, has lost patience and started trying to transform its living environment. Calvin's body also began to respond to this command from the central nervous system, spontaneously mobilizing the entire body's nutritional reserves to supply this just begun but inexplicably ending, massive project. So, a situation where only Calvin's consciousness was injured was awkwardly formed. The intense periodic pain woke Calvin up from sleep, and the excessive secretion of hormones and rapidly rising body temperature, even the critical energy reserves of various parts of the body, reluctantly warned him. Struggling to stand up, Calvin saw himself in the mirror across from the bed, his bones and flesh like firewood. After losing muscle support, his loose and wrinkled skin hung on the thick skeleton, resembling a scarecrow in the field used to scare birds. The deep sunken eyes, bloodshot eyes, and sunken cheekbones, along with a hungry ghost-like face, reminded him of his strongest current feelings. Hungry. He urgently craves the intake of energy, whether solid or liquid. After roughly picking up the water glass on the table and drinking it all in one gulp, Calvin looked around and found a terrible problem. This body was still in its developmental stage, and the so-dot called half-big kid would eat me to death. Not to mention the half-sized bear. The strong appetite has always made Calvin eat as much as you give me, and he has never had any habit of storing food. The pain is becoming increasingly intense. What does renovation mean? What are the benefits of success? Now Calvin has no time to think. But his instinctive fear of failure made him no longer hesitate, and he vigorously tapped the red emergency button next to the bed. He lay trembling down by the bedside, waiting for the arrival of medical rescue. After exerting his last will to hold the tag with his identity and blood type in his hand, darkness enveloped Calvin's consciousness, lost the adult, am I the first time I was killed by myself. This was his last thought before falling into a coma. In the quiet subspace, on the bridge of the wandering band. The duty personnel who discovered abnormalities activated the rescue mechanism, and the medical team and security forces immediately ruled out the possibility of subspace pollution before transferring the unconscious Calvin to the survival module for rest. Abnormal fluid parameters inside the tank. The electrolyte content is rapidly decreasing. The medical team reported to the person in charge. Another standard unit, no, three more. The person in charge wiped the sweat off their head and glanced at the Calvin floating inside the transparent green tank. Turning his head, he asked. How many times has it been? Five times within ten minutes, accumulating twenty units. Do you want to give up? The crew on the control console said without looking up. Report the situation to the lady, the decision that making power over the goods does not lie with us. Three minutes later, the red communicator representing the emergency situation in the lady's office was connected. After a brief understanding of the basic information, the lady did not hesitate to order. Ensure the energy supply of the target character. Also notify the psychic assessment team that we may need their help. The woman who hung up the communicator thought for a moment, 
grabbed the regular coat hanging from the back of the chair, and walked towards the door. Decisions should be made on the front line of the battlefield, the closer the better. This is the experience of a 300-year veteran. In the medical cabin, all three high-dot-level spiritual beings from the Star Language Court were present. Under the supervision of the woman, they conducted a detailed spiritual perception of the Calvin inside the tank. Its secondary development. After a brief conversation, the three spiritual beings spoke firmly to the lady. Although rare, the comprehensive sign index and heat distribution map, as well as the target spiritual fluctuations, are indeed a typical secondary development. The lady is not familiar with overly specialized vocabulary in the field of spirituality. She only wants the fastest and most effective advice. What is your opinion? Observation or destruction? Secondary development of psychics is very rare and has a high possibility of variation. Considering that we are currently engaged in subspace navigation, my suggestion is to destroy them on dot site. The psychic from the Ministry of the Interior gave his judgment. However, the other two spiritual beings did not make any other suggestions due to certain concerns. After the psychic from the Ministry of the Interior finished speaking, the entire medical cabin fell silent. And the lady also habitually lifted her arms and began to unconsciously pace in high dot speed thinking. After taking a few steps, the lady turned to the person inside and said. One beta as level psychics, do we not have the ability to handle mutations at the beginning? This is not the correct solution. The three spiritual beings have no objection. The lady saw the situation and said. If we want to help him, what should we do? Maintain current electrolyte input and increase gamma medical agents with a gamma value exceeding 5%, the higher the content, the better, that is what he needs most now. But this cost may be too expensive. After a few seconds of silence, the psychic from the Navy couldn't help but speak up. Okay, how many medical agents do we have that meet the standards? The lady turned her head and aimed her firepower at the medical staff. There were no significant casualties during this voyage, so the allocation for you and the entire base team was based on three times the number of people, and the quantity is currently full. The allocation for the three spiritual mentors is still. Halfway through the conversation, the healthcare professional, who felt uncomfortable, decisively chose to shut up when he saw the malevolent gaze of the Ministry of the Interior's psychics. But it's already too late. Then give it all to him. The lady waved her hand and cut off the conversation, continuing. 156 doses of gamma potions, I want to see if he can stomach them. After speaking, the lady turned to the clerk and gave the order. I command. The second Kassin squad of the base team, no, the Aldrin squad has finished repairing. Hurry to the medical pod as soon as possible and monitor the target's activity throughout. The Nun Squadron has full authority to handle this incident until the target's secondary development is completed or mutates. After speaking, the lady turned around and walked outside the cabin. Completely ignoring the ugly expression of the psychic from the Ministry of the Interior. Inside the green tank, Calvin, who knew nothing about this game, was still sleeping in a difficult struggle with himself. Three days later, after consuming a full 150 doses of gamma medication and 500 doses of electrolyte medication, Calvin finally regained his originally muscular physique with sufficient substance supplementation. His various physical signs gradually stabilized after the initial surge. Not only that, his height also quickly increased from 190 centimeters when he first boarded the ship to 210 centimeters. The wider shoulders and thicker collarbones make his upper body dimensions wider and thicker, and the instinctive adjustments during development also bring his figure closer to the golden ratio. More importantly, from the resonance fluoroscopy, it can be clearly seen that Calvin's brainstem is centered to the left, with an unseen lobular gland gradually developing and forming within three days. The growth direction that tilts completely to the left is like leaving a symmetrical position for another leaf. The veins attached to it periodically open and close with the surging of blood. 
The evaluation by medical personnel is that the function is unknown and belongs to a benign mutation. The nuns have also witnessed this process throughout, which can ensure the purity of this mutation. At this moment, Calvin is like a sleeping statue of the god of war, quietly floating and sinking in the green tank with his breath. After another four days, Calvin's brainwave consciousness gradually became active and he finally woke up in a deep breath. When he opened his eyes, he saw his old acquaintance Aldrin and Cassin standing beside him, commenting on his body with sign language. So Calvin, who had been exposed to the opposite sex for the first time in his life, woke up with the first thought. Gone. How much did he lose? The black ebony framed spaceship is still sailing silently in the subspace. But just like its name suggests, even the farthest wandering will eventually come to an end. On the throne. Please have every comrade who passes by give me a valuable vote of recommendation. Your support is related to the future of Saturn V. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Possessing Grandeur in the Micro Level You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Possessing Grandeur in the Micro Level Eight days later, the long journey of subspace is coming to an end. Under the correct guidance of the navigator, the dusty wandering band successfully jumped out of the Manzeville point in the solar system and returned to the real universe. After communicating with the star torch in advance in the subspace, the stargazer obtained the correct identification information, which was also transmitted to the galaxy defense fortress located in Mars orbit as soon as the spacecraft returned to the real universe. The activated defense mechanism was cancelled by signals from Mars, and weapon arrays on the outer orbits of surrounding planets were gradually shut down. The cruising fleet, which was located three astronomical units away from the spacecraft, also put away the fully charged light spears. Another peaceful day almost simultaneously, in the confidential communication room of the Wandering Orchestra, a letter containing basic Calvin information and the latest updates from secondary development was secretly sent to Titan V after being heavily encrypted in the first time. I only hope that the big shots there can pay attention to this news in a timely manner, so as not to waste the ladies' hard work. After a brief two-dot-day voyage, the wandering orchestra finally arrived at its final destination. The Moon In the busiest and most abundant spaceport in the center of this empire, the black ship will unload the goods collected along the way. Hand it over to the staff stationed on the moon by the Star Language Court in the empire. Here, low-dot-level spiritual beings who have been preliminarily judged to have no training value and illegal spiritual beings who have not been registered and filed with the Empire will be directly sent to the Star Torch Court. After being drained of all their spiritual powers, becoming a ray of glory among the countless radiances of the Emperor and the subspace will be their final glory. The rest of the people will be taken to the City of Vision in the Grand Palace Complex located in the Himalayas. There, the Spiritual Academy will provide them with up to five years of training based on their strengths. After successful rating, they will be assigned to relevant spiritual positions in various administrative, combat, and production departments of the Empire. On the contrary, those who fail or are proven unable to afford training will have a different fate from their fellow travelers five years ago. Burning themselves in the Star Torch Palace is their final fate. Calvin had basically regained his mobility on the 22nd day of his subspace trip. This successful decision has once again consolidated the lady's authority on the black ship. The lady who was in a good mood due to successful investment even allowed him and the crew to have the same opportunity to enjoy the services of the Black Boat Public Restaurant. This kind of preferential treatment cannot be said to be unparalleled on the wandering band number, it can only be said to be unprecedented. Salute to the great Tomliao Khan. But unfortunately, the skyrocketing size and the same amount of power caused him to completely lose his precise control over his body. His strength almost doubled, while the increase in muscle thickness by three full dimensions was only one of the reasons. According to the medical staff, his bones have grown by nearly 10% due to the presence of metal components, mainly iron which can be clearly seen in resonance fluoroscopy as a reddish-yellow color caused by iron oxide in the bones. 
This resulted in Calvin's bone density doubling five times compared to before. The record for natural growth of mammals is approaching its limit. A creature called a saber-toothed tiger on the land of Gatera. In summary, obtaining sufficient bone support strength may be the true reason for Calvin's unprecedented muscle potential liberation. And the uncontrollable power of inflation also made Calvin, in the last two weeks of the voyage, a true, tableware destroyer, on the black ship. Whether it's iron, steel, alloy, or even the pottery and steel tableware that the angry chef brought out to suppress the bottom of the box, they were all ravaged by Calvin's inhumane power faced with the furious chef, Calvin once awkwardly defended himself after causing trouble, saying, in the eyes of military personnel, how can such things be called out of control? So the entire restaurant was suddenly filled with a joyful atmosphere. The lady is happy to see this small matter succeed. After receiving the relevant loss list submitted by the service personnel, she once smiled and said to Sister Casson, who was watching the excitement on the side. There will always be someone willing to pay for him, all we need to do is wait quietly. Two days before the arrival of the black ship on the moon. After completing restorative training in the training area, Calvin met Casson, who was leading a routine patrol, on his way back to the living quarters. After a brief silence of a few seconds, Calvin couldn't help but ask the nun who was supposed to pass by in the wrong direction. Finally. I mean, if possible, I want to know how the people in that village are doing, Uncle Andre and the others. Are they okay? Kashin turned around and quietly looked up at the slightly nervous young man in front of him for a few seconds. Then she made a string of sign language, and the new nuns accompanying her translated. The relevant documents have been sent to Terra and will be handed over to you by someone after you disembark and arrive at the college. Afterwards, Kashin didn't turn his head and led the team away, leaving only Calvin with a questioning expression in place. After returning to his cabin for a simple wash, Calvin lay quietly on the bed, lifting up his extra 10 centimeters foot due to his height, and breathed a sigh of relief. He closed his eyes and immersed himself in the void. Start observing the initiator of this ordeal. The black gemstone. It also responded to his call, slowly rotating and rising from the deep sea of consciousness. Why do I see a sphere made up of countless prisms, and they can only see walls? This strange cognitive gap, which Calvin had not had the opportunity to consider before, can only be kept as his own secret. Now that all the dust has settled, at least before reaching the moon, he does have the opportunity to think quietly about this issue without being disturbed. Wall, ball. Crystal walls, angular balls. Yes. Calvin suddenly sat up, his eyes not opening. In the spiritual space, he attempted to bring himself closer for the first time, looking up at this originally tiny sphere from a microscopic perspective. A little bigger, even bigger. When he magnifies the sphere in his field of view, then magnifies it again. When the perspective is magnified hundreds or thousands of times. In Calvin's eyes, the subtle edges of this sphere finally began to become clear. Not enough. Come again. When magnified one thousand times again, to the extent that the entire sphere became as massive as a star and filled his entire field of view. In Calvin's eyes, he finally got what the psychic called the black crystal wall, this is too outrageous. From such a microscopic perspective, countless towering black crystal prisms form a star-like magnificent sphere that slowly rotates. And every crystal edge of it is engraved with mysterious characters. This star seems to have its own life, accompanied by the rhythm of breathing, and every moment there are thick lightning and thunder like giant trees jumping on those adult-sized characters. Just like a prominence on the surface of the sun, jumping up and down. It is trying to light up the wall by activating those dim characters. The Gal text can be easily read at a glance. But only a small portion can be illuminated here, perhaps less than 10%. Most walls are dull and broken, just like the runes engraved on them. Giant cracks filled the bodies of these walls. And every time lightning passes through these dim and shattered walls, the huge cracks on the walls shrink slightly and imperceptibly. 
What have I gone through, exactly? Dust stood in the distance of a black star, looking at Calvin in front of him in a magnificent and mythical scene, and moaned as he said these words. First serve, then modify, manual disability. It's really funny. Love you all, willing to see every soul in my words. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Children and Hammers You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Children and Hammers When the initial shock returned to silence, Calvin gradually calmed down. He began to contemplate an obvious question. What they see are these walls. Or. Influenced by the essence of the soul, what they can see is only the walls. He thought while restoring his perspective to normal, until the ball, which symbolized his soul, returned to the size of a ping-pong ball. Looking at the sphere in front of him, a fact that made him shudder and uneasy lay before him. As an outsider, his soul was ultimately fundamentally different from the people of this universe. And the black gemstone in front of him, when faced outside of himself, was far from the gentleness it exhibited today. Calvin opened his hand and gently held it in his palm, watching the sphere quietly hover in his palm. The black lightning, which was originally as thick as a giant tree, became almost imperceptible from this perspective. But Calvin, who had already observed it up close, was no longer deceived by these appearances. He already understood how great the sphere in front of him, or rather his own essence, was compared to the soul of this primordial species in the universe. And that tiny electric current, like threads, should be so violent when facing others. Many messages about his soul itself were already conveyed to his consciousness at first glance when he saw those images. Lightning is composed of spiritual energy, which is the energy that sustains the operation of the sphere and also a weapon to defend its own integrity. The shattered wall is the memory and emotion lost by his soul on its journey to this universe. This is the conclusion drawn by Calvin from this observation. Originally, after fourteen years of slow recovery, the spiritual energy in his soul had already approached the minimum standard for reigniting more than once. But apart from spiritual energy, the lack of soul as the main material that makes up the sphere cannot be restored on its own. So the subconscious dominated sphere can only instinctively try to reignite its consciousness after each spiritual energy is sufficient. But without enough soul fragments of intelligent beings and the emotions carried on them, the failure to restart the operation is inevitable. And he can only have the opportunity to observe this body, which is intellectually deficient due to lack of soul, at the moment of each failed ignition. If we just wait in silence like this, sitting and waiting for our bodies to age step by step until death, Calvin cannot wait until the day of regaining consciousness. What despair would that be? It took a full fourteen years for that which, by chance, to fill the last one billionth gap for him, giving him a chance to see the light again. The long wait is agonizing, but it is not a bad thing. It is precisely because of this that Calvin only had fourteen years to allow his body to grow sufficiently, and then reluctantly withstand the terrifying spiritual pressure originating from his soul when he regained consciousness in the future. During these days on the ship, he had the opportunity to understand that in most cases, the strength of a psychic is actually inversely proportional to the strength of his real body. After all, powerful spiritual abilities are mostly innate, and powerful yet uncontrollable forces create an unequal pressure on the undeveloped body. This also deprives most people of the opportunity to achieve normal development. Except for a few exotic creatures born in the wilderness, the stronger their spiritual abilities, the thinner their bodies have almost become the law of this population. People like Calvin who can give their bodies enough time to develop before picking up their spiritual talent. It can be said to be unparalleled throughout the entire empire's recorded history. This is also the reason why his subconscious, after digesting the offerings from the witches, couldn't wait to start feeding himself back. In terms of the soul carried by his body, his bear-like strong body is still completely incomparable. Fortunately, in the short time after he regained consciousness, he did not think or have the opportunity to use this power. A group of silent nuns patrolling around 24 hours. 
Otherwise, using a child to swing a sledgehammer is not enough to describe his danger. Thinking of this, Calvin touched the back of his head with some fear. Before releasing the first spiritual lightning bolt, the most painful way for him to die is to instantly evaporate his entire body and flesh one day later, the wandering orchestra, which had been granted entry permission, finally slowly docked in a towering star harbor in orbit, captured by the gravitational pull of the moon. After successfully docking with the spacecraft at the docking port, the goods represented by Calvin were carefully handed over in batches to the staff stationed on the moon by the Star Language Academy. This is also the first time Calvin has had the opportunity to observe up close this airport, which best represents the prosperity of the empire. Countless huge cargo ships, locusts generally continuously enter and exit the star harbor built around the gravitational orbit of the entire moon. After unloading the specialty supplies from various planetary worlds, they hurriedly sailed towards the distance. And these massive supplies are only a daily part of the shipping system maintained and operated by the Empire. His life as a veteran in his past life also allowed him to see through the prosperity before him. The vast Empire supported by it spans the entire galaxy and is home to billions of soldiers, which is so powerful and invincible. Without much stopping, Calvin and his companions, who were sensitive materials, were quickly taken to the spacecraft in batches by fully armed guards, flying towards their designated units. And on the other side of the sun, Saturn, a gray spaceship with the same destination quietly sailed towards Terra from Titan the spaceship carrying Calvin also carried five children of similar ages, dressed in exquisite clothing, in stark contrast to the gray training uniform Calvin, which was only worn on the black ship. They did not falsely use color for Calvin as a result. More precisely, it is ignoring Calvin. These children from extraordinary backgrounds clearly received excellent elite education from a young age. This made them face a strong man who is 210 centimeters tall and weighs over 130 kilograms up close, with no other expression except for the one who gently raised an eyebrow when they first met. Soon, the ship carrying Calvin landed on the tarmac at the corner of the magnificent palace complex in the Himalayas. Their destination for this trip is also the training institution of the Star Language Court for all junior spiritual beings. The City of Vision, which has arrived. There were already people waiting on the apron, and these people in black robes turned around and left with their corresponding trainees after reading out their personnel numbers. Calvin is no exception. Follow the guide ahead silently towards the main square in the distance. Calvin saw a huge square in the distance that almost exceeded his field of vision. The Romanesque architectural complex at the end of the square is complex and solemn, with a huge striped battle flag hanging from top to bottom on the main building in the center. In the center of the pure black background, there is a red eye with wings and a crown on its head, representing the emblem of the alma mater of all registered spiritual beings in the Imperial Star Language Court. City of Vision after a full two hours, the group finally reached a tower on the edge of the building complex. This is also their residential area. After receiving basic living supplies and a set of black robes and two sets of black training uniforms at the entrance, Calvin was assigned to a single dormitory. The facilities in the room are nothing but a bed and a set of tables and chairs. Terra time is exactly seven o'clock. After a simple wash, Calvin, who was overly energetic during the day, quickly fell asleep. At the same time, a figure even taller than Calvin had just stepped off a Thunderhawk assault boat. When a large airport pickup team saw the figure of this man from a distance, they all knelt down in a Sky Eagle salute and recited. In the name of the Emperor, we, on behalf of the Star Language Court Spiritual Scripture Academy, welcome your arrival, esteemed Master Aiden. End of this chapter Chapter 9. Letters from Afar. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Letters from Afar, The Strong Wind Rises and the Clouds Fly. The Chainsaw Sword Strikes Him Cold. On the First Day of Training. In the open training ground, in front of the formation of the Political Commissar Training Class. An instructor clearly from the Stormwind Star Domain in the northwest of the Empire, 
passionately delivering a speech with his rich local accent. Drool and breath spewed out uncontrollably from his large mouth under his messy beard. At the climax, the instructor even ignored the eyes of his colleagues behind him and danced in front of the entire student formation, singing the Klitsch A.D. in rigid lyrics above. Calvin stood at the head of the political commissar's formation on the training ground, his strong body like a reef, sheltering his comrades from the wind and rain. As the instructor turned around, Calvin quickly wiped the saliva on his face with his sleeve. Continuing to maintain a serious expression in the respectful gaze of his comrades beside him. And the speech continues. On the battlefield. What is your most reliable companion? Did you have spiritual energy that was not working at that time? What if you ran out of it? Surrender. Only by pointing at spiritual energy can you make a living. The most reliable person on the battlefield is yourself. At any time, the biceps is the most trustworthy weapon. The chainsaw sword is your most reassuring wife. Under the morning sun at six o'clock Terra time, Calvin and his classmates had a blank mind. The only thing I can remember is the crystal clear saliva hanging from the messy beard on the instructor's face until the instructor began ordering, target left front runway, 20 km sprint. Time is unlimited, but the last 10 people don't have dinner. Run, keep running, run to death. From morning till night, even lunch is taken care of in a temporary mobile cafeteria set up next to the playground. This is the first lesson the teacher gave them. In his original words, it is. Can't even lift your legs and still want to chop someone. You've been thinking so much. Many students collapsed and fell into a coma due to severe vomiting, and were then carried down by medical staff. But there are also some clever students who start cheating with their psychic abilities, using them while running to relieve the accumulation of lactic acid on their muscles, or trying to use their psychic abilities to calm the already chaotic breathing rhythm. They also use their psychic abilities to push themselves forward while running to reduce physical exhaustion in short, each of the eight immortals showed their divine abilities when crossing the sea, but the instructor ignored them all, which finally made the students understand the instructor's intention. The instructor hopes that they understand that the application of psychics is far from limited to combat on the battlefield. And it can also be applied in every aspect of the battlefield and daily life to enhance oneself and reduce consumption. So the act of cheating began to be completely publicized. Various forms of psychic application have begun to appear openly among the running crowd. Calvin is not particularly impressive among them, but his past service life has given him ample experience to allocate his energy reasonably. After someone started cheating with psychic powers, Calvin suddenly realized. He began to observe and reflect on the application of spirituality in running. At the beginning, Calvin attempted to use psychic energy to relieve muscle fatigue, but soon realized that the efficiency of doing so was too low. The consumption of dynamic psychic energy is much greater than that of static energy. So he began to emulate the running shoes he had seen in his past life. Setting up an elastic force field with a curved surface under his military boots, which greatly relieved the pressure on Calvin's ankle. Moreover, the consumption of spiritual energy during this process can be almost negligible. Then, he began to imitate the exoskeletons of previous artillery units, allowing the burden of his weight on the bones to be fully distributed on the transparent spiritual skeleton outside the body. In the last hour, he even benefited from basic compulsory education in his past life and began to try to use fluids to reduce frontal wind resistance and then try to use wind resistance. Calvin's running efficiency has greatly improved. Especially after the positive spiritual cone he built was formed, he was even able to maintain a 100-meter sprint speed with extremely low consumption for long-distance running. The instructor, who had been ignoring the small movements of the students, saw Calvin leading the crowd and laughed angrily. Just a bunch of little smarts. He raised his hand to look at the watch and then blew the whistle in his mouth. Comment. After all the students had gathered, the instructor stood in front of the formation, grinning loudly. Today's clever play is not an exception. Let's keep your minds open, it's okay. 
but take the clever play as the right path, it's not possible. Starting tomorrow morning, in all physical training subjects, the use of spiritual energy is limited to recovery, disband. The above is all of Calvin's life on his first day at the Spiritual Scripture Academy. In the following days, under the training of instructors, Calvin increasingly tended to use psychic energy as a tool for body development. Using psychic energy to repair muscle fibers makes Calvin's body stronger. And the rapid recovery ability also gives Calvin more opportunities to push his body beyond its limits. His muscle fibers naturally become stronger and more resilient as they are constantly torn and repaired. The afterglow of the developmental wave brought about by the second mutation is silently enhancing his bone strength. In the following month of such a simple training life, Calvin enjoyed the pure military life he had never hoped for in his previous life. This is the life he has been longing for in his dreams, and it is also a rare and beautiful memory for him when he constantly faces various extreme environments on the battlefield in the future. Perhaps this kind of strength training is too simple for him. He is not unaware that using the immense power in his hands solely as a tool for restoring and developing his body is a waste. But compared to his powerful and asymmetric spiritual abilities, it is indeed a helpless choice for him to develop as many physical limits as possible within limited means. The political commissar class began teaching courses on weapons from the second month onwards. During this period, Calvin had fully mastered most of the weapon parameters and conventional operational procedures involved in basic infantry tactics. In the third month, when the political commissar class began to truly engage in training on core technologies, namely the knowledge of using psionic powers, Calvin received a package from afar. Calvin, who was called out in class, looked at the black package in his hand with a golden eagle emblem printed on it, and the gilded handwriting on it with a bewildered expression. Salute to the brave naval warrior Silvia Alonso. This is followed by the emblem of the trial court. The scene fell into an awkward silence, and he didn't recognize the name on it, nor was he clear about his relationship with it. The person who delivered the package seemed to see his situation, but clearly misunderstood the reason for his embarrassment. He said to Calvin. There is a letter in the package that you can take a look at when you have time. Although it may not bring good news, every warrior who bravely sacrifices for the empire has the right to leave their property to their own family. After speaking, the messenger left accompanied by the staff sent by the college to monitor. But his words left Calvin even more puzzled, as it was clearly not the name of any one of his parents he knew after class, Calvin finally had the opportunity to open this package in the dormitory. The package is not light in weight. When opened, a badge presses against a letter, and further down, a black relic box is the entire contents. The badge is the size of a palm, and on the blue gilded badge, a ferocious lion is roaring with its mouth open. A variant of an ancient Latin letter Psi Pushi, in the center of the lion's forehead. Calvin weighed it and found that the weight was not light. But he had no impression of the meaning represented by the emblem, rather than the emblem itself. He placed the badge at his hand and continued to read the letter below. After opening the envelope, a light gray piece of writing paper slid out. To my lovely child, by the time you see this letter, I should have returned to the throne. I hope that our brief relationship has not made you forget our relationship, and we have had a pleasant time on the black ship. And now that the war is approaching, I do not have any other relatives or friends. After thinking about it, since things are not needed after death, they always have to be sent out, and I hope you will not mind. Your forever naval friend. Signed by. Sylvia Alonso. So, this chapter was actually rushed out and revised as I posted it. But your enthusiasm surprised me. Just five minutes after it was posted, someone followed me up. This friend, you didn't see what I had before I made the changes, did you? Author from a certain society who died, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 Change and Reflection You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Change and Reflection The bad news always runs faster than the wind. 
It took about a month for Calvin to have the opportunity to understand the true meaning represented by this letter through the internal reference materials of the Star Language Court. The Wandering Orchestra, in some sense, is the place where Calvin's life began. Shortly after the start of the new tithing tax journey, they encountered a storm from subspace on the edge of the Stormwind domain. And closely following the storm came a whole fleet of interstellar pirates. In the fierce gang jumping battle, the entire crew of the wandering band suffered over 85% damage. The Silent Sisters, led by the Lady, were interrupted by the Chaos Star Warriors who emerged from the flank and broke through the wall during their decapitation battle against the opposing wizard. The Lady and her nuns all returned to the throne, but Yukazin was unable to participate in the operation due to severe injuries and coma, and was able to survive. All members of the Marine Corps were killed in action. All command personnel on board died in action, starting from the captain. All members of the weapon team, including gun and artillery sergeants, were killed in action. All members of the stargazer and navigator team died in action, and she was the earliest to die. The Star Whisperer foresaw the brutality of this battle before the critical moment arrived. She sacrificed herself and forcibly sent the message of seeking help to the nearest satellite defense fortress and interstellar communication public channel during the subspace storm. In the hope that any possible troops will go to rescue. And the cost is her soul. This slender lady, who had been silent for years, made every effort to send out a request for help. The soul that lost its last bit of spiritual protection was completely exposed in the greedy subspace, and was soon torn apart by the rising demons. But her efforts were not let down. At the most critical moment of the battle, only sporadic resistance remained on the bridge of the entire ship, and the engine power had been completely lost. The entire ship had been captured by the pirate's gravitational claws and was ready to be towed to the pirate base in the asteroid belt. An Estat platoon patrolling the star area and receiving a request for assistance finally arrived. Under the strong support of this new force and the threat that the regional fleet may arrive at any time. The pirates abandoned their original goal of capturing the entire wandering band and gradually retreated from the ship. After this battle, less than 10,000 crew members of the entire wandering band, including the mechanical slaves on the lower deck, survived. This kind of battle may seem too brutal to us, but it is not remarkable in the Empire's war.torn territory. He can only represent the departure of a familiar name to some members of the ruling body of the Empire, the High Lord Council. In the eyes of the unrelated Ministry of the Interior, this can only be a cold string of numbers. But it's different from Calvin. In a sense, this spaceship that only lived for a month is his hometown for this life. And the deaths of those who represented the people he first met in this world had a huge impact on Calvin. He is no longer like a paper boat drifting in the river of fate, only drifting with the current. Calvin began to have a desire to participate in this world, hoping to understand the consciousness of those who sacrificed themselves in the last moment of battle. So, in addition to training, Calvin had a new activity venue. The Library. Unlike most people, his goal is not to write books with spiritual knowledge. What he wants to know is the history and culture of this empire. He wants to understand the past and present of the country he lives in. Calvin doesn't want to go with the flow anymore, he wants to take the initiative to learn about things he doesn't know. If possible, he wants to continue living with honor as a soldier, so he needs a reason. The reason is that this is the first lesson he learned as a soldier in his past life, and it is also the driving force behind his lifelong struggle for it. Our generation, why are we fighting? The cultural and historical section of the library is sparsely populated. Perhaps it is because the young people here always pursue power too utilitarianly. There are not many borrowing traces of books here, and many books have been left unattended since they were placed here. In the quiet bookshelf and borrowing area, there are only two people present. Apart from Calvin, another borrower is sitting in the center of the borrowing area. What Calvin didn't know was that he was able to come here and freely browse through these books that were not within his level of confidentiality, all thanks to this quiet stranger reading in front of him. 
Under the dim yellow candlelight, his body, even taller than Calvin, remained motionless like a sculpture. Only the servo skull floating next to it occasionally makes a slight sound when flipping pages. This is a tall old man with silver hair dressed in a simple gray robe, his angular and rugged appearance hidden in the hood of his jumpsuit. He always reads quietly by candlelight alone, but the feeling of reading is different from others' thirst for knowledge. As the old man sat among the piles of books on imperial history, quietly reading, a strange feeling made him blend in with his surroundings. As if he himself was a part of that heavy history. This is probably a person full of stories. Calvin occasionally thinks when distracted. The footprints of Calvin, who has been reading and accessing books for a long time, spread throughout the bookshelf and reading area. Perhaps too many missed opportunities make the elderly occasionally nod politely when they lift their heads and touch Calvin's gaze. But most of the time, the elderly sit there quietly, as if they have existed here for eternity. And Calvin himself slowly put aside his inner restlessness while reading, and began to be succumbed to the charm of this ancient empire, which was filled with disasters and hardships during his growth. When an empire composed of a single race continues through numerous hardships for thousands of years, its history is not just a record of a civilization. It is a history of development, war, and survival. When presented in front of Calvin like a scroll in the form of a chronicle, there is no doubt that he has been conquered. He knew for the first time that there were so many anomalies and disasters in this universe, and there were so many civilizations and wars within the scope of the Milky Way alone. Humans only hoped to survive, which was so difficult. In the thousands of years of history, there have been too many heroes who have burned themselves and dedicated themselves to the survival and continuation of this race and empire. There are also too many tragedies recorded in equally indifferent words in unnoticed documents. During the reading process, I learned that the outdated and futile management of the empire made Calvin despise it. But it was the same or even worse environment that made Calvin realize that it was not his predecessors who lacked wisdom, but rather a necessary compromise with the primary goal of survival and continuity. Billions of people, life and death depend on him. From the perspective of onlookers, the history of the empire is both magnificent and ruthless. Among them, the biography of the emperor himself is particularly fascinating to Calvin. Calvin is a soldier who understands the contributions made by the emperor to the empire, Calvin is just a soldier, he cannot understand how the emperor could be so selfless. Devoting one's life to the country and nation one loves is the limit that Calvin can achieve. But completely abandoning oneself, without any personal feelings. Even according to many records, the decrees issued by the emperor himself can be seen through and followed in the eyes of Calvin who has undergone nine years of compulsory education. It is an iron law that any empire during its expansion must have its military institutions as its center of power. When this country transitions to a maintenance period, the transfer of power centered around the civil service system is also a trend. But if the ruler of this empire does not want to shed too much blood in the cruel transfer of power, then there must be a person who can stabilize those meritorious nobles. He must be strong enough, charming enough, have a broad vision enough, and even have the consciousness to sacrifice himself. And cruelly, this person cannot be the master himself. Make such a person, not only the closest comrade in arms, but also the eldest son who is most like me and loves me the most. Hand delivered to the altar of power, watching his destined death in agony and struggle. Regardless of the outcome, it goes far beyond the scope of Calvin's understanding. He couldn't help but ponder, does the emperor have no human nature? Or does the emperor not understand human nature? No, when he interacts with his beloved children, the love he shows is not like cheating. So if the emperor has human nature, how can such behavior be explained? Does he not love his children? No, of course he loves his children, but he loves this country and this race more. Calvin asked himself, can he do it by putting himself in the shoes of others? He may sacrifice himself without hesitation, but what about his own children? What about relatives? Can I persuade myself to personally put them on the altar? 
just for this empire made up of countless humans. What about himself? The answer is certainly negative, he cannot do it. These things, just seeing brief written records, have already made Calvin feel heavy. So in the eyes of the emperor, how did he view these unavoidable issues? Calvin furrowed his brow as he lowered his head to contemplate and hastily put down his book, ready to leave the library. After all, restaurants that are only open for a limited time will not understand Calvin's sadness of spring and autumn. You seem a bit puzzled, my child. This is the first time Calvin has heard his voice in the room with this old man for so long. Following this low and powerful voice, Calvin stopped and looked up at the center of the reading area. In the golden candlelight, the silver-haired old man calmly spoke to him. I had a sudden impulse to take this opportunity to explore the cultural aspects of this IP, apart from war, but I'm not sure if everyone is interested in reading on. End of this chapter